church. Hope that you enjoyed that look back at last Sunday, uh, our Easter Sunday this year, which was truly an Easter like no other, but it was an amazing Easter Sunday. And we gathered in the parking lot and online and on the radio. And because we gathered in so many different ways in different places, it's difficult to know exact numbers of how many people were a part of our service. But after looking at information that Facebook provides us, um, knowing people that we've talked to who listened on the radio, and of course those that gathered here in the parking lot, uh, we can confidently say now that Easter 2020 was the largest Easter celebration that we have ever had at Lifesong with over 1,000 people. <laughs> 1,000 people joining in. I didn't expect to be emotional when I shared that with you. But the truth is, that is just one of many ways that God has shown us that he is faithful and that he is not done yet. That he still has a mission and a vision for Lifesong Family Church. And I've shared this a couple of different times, but I truly do believe that at the end of all of this craziness that we're in the middle of, when we come out of it on the other side, we're going to come out as a church bigger, better, stronger, and more united than we have ever been before and more well equipped to fulfill the mission that God has given us. And so in doing so, we're going to continue to dig into his word and to look at what he has to say to us about who we are called to be and what he says about our circumstances. And to do that, we are going to kick off a series this week that has actually been planned since sometime near the end of last year. Now, as I was planning out my calendar for the year, it occurred to me that the month of May would bring us Mother's Day, Memorial Day, and Graduation Sunday. And those days naturally find us talking about our heroes. And then, over the last several weeks, heroes started to look a little different. It was no longer just those who made a huge standout impact or achievement or investments in our personal lives or in our society. Heroes suddenly started to look like everyday men and women who were just doing their jobs. And so today we're starting a seven week series called Everyday Heroes. And in that series we're gonna explore some of the deeper biblical truth of what it means to be a hero and how we live that out today. I'm also excited that on a handful of these Sundays coming up, you'll get to hear from some of our other teachers and leaders as well. Because eventually, you're going to get tired of hearing my cherub-like timber in my voice. And you'll want to hear somebody else talk. And we want you to remember that we have a whole team of people here who God has gifted to share his word. So you're going to get to hear from them throughout this series. But today, we're going to get started with Everyday Heroes with a simple question. How do you define hero? Or what makes a hero? So while the dictionary says that a hero is a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. A hero is courageous, outstanding, and noble. Well, these are the kind of people that we're drawn to. People that we want to follow. People that we want to be like. People that we look up to. And now we can find these kinds of people all around us. Now due to the current events in our world, we don't have to look any farther than our local grocery store or hospital. Of course, our first responders generally fall into this category, as well as our military. But we can also look into the pages of the Bible to find some pretty amazing everyday heroes as well. People who, on the surface, are just like you and me. And they may have lived thousands of years ago, 
but there wasn't anything particularly remarkable about them, except for some key things. And so we're going to look at one of them today, and I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles or open your apps to the book of Genesis chapter 6. We are going to talk about a man and a story that pretty much everyone is familiar with. And this particular individual has gotten a whole lot of print on Facebook recently. Because much like us, he and his family were shut up and locked away for a period of time in the middle of a worldwide crisis and disaster. Today we're going to talk about Noah. And so there in Genesis chapter 6, starting at verse 9, this is what we're going to read. These are the family records of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with wickedness. God saw how corrupt the earth was, for every creature had corrupted its way on the earth. Then God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to every creature, for the earth is filled with wickedness because of them. Therefore, I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. You are to make a roof, finishing the sides of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. You are to put a door in the side of the ark. Make it with lower, middle, and upper decks. Understand that I am bringing a flood, flood waters on the earth to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. You are also to bring into the ark two of all the living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of everything, from the birds according to their kinds, from the livestock according to their kinds, and from the animals that crawl on the ground according to their kinds, will come to you so that you can keep them alive. Take with you every kind of food that is eaten. Gather it as food for you and for them. And Noah did this. He did everything that God had commanded him. Would you pray with me this morning, church? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these truths that ring out through the ages. And while they may be ancient, still speak relevant truth to our lives today. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear as you transform us from the inside out and make us more like you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So now there's a lot that we can learn from Noah about being an everyday hero. But the first thing we need to look at is what set him apart. What made Noah different from everyone else? Now we find that right out of the gate in verse 9. Noah walked with God. It tells us right there. Now verse 11 tells us that the whole earth was corrupt and full of wickedness. In a day when the world literally walked away from God, Noah chose to walk with him. Now that's not always an easy choice. Now the choice by itself, that may be easy to make, but the reality of living out that choice can be far more difficult. Now Noah discovered this without a doubt when he made the choice to walk with God into this crazy situation that God had called him into. And I want you to put yourself in this guy's shoes for a second. No one had ever built a boat like this before. And no one had ever had cause to consider building a boat like this. And yet Noah gets this word from God to start building now, the massive amount of space that this would have taken up and the massive amount of wood and other materials that would have been necessary to complete this job 
would not have gone unnoticed by the people that were around Noah. Now, we don't know for certain how many people there were living close by, but we can guess that even a few people who took notice of what was happening would have spread the word. And that would have undoubtedly brought a certain amount of public ridicule on Noah and his family. I don't know if you've ever seen the sequel to the movie Bruce Almighty. It's called Evan Almighty. Um, If you haven't seen it, what else are you doing? Look it up on Netflix or something. It's pretty funny. I enjoy it. You'll like it too. But it gives us a modern day rendition of kind of what this would look like and the amount of ridicule that would have come on Noah and his family and the stress and strife that would have existed because of the social pressure that came on him for doing something that looked absolutely insane. See, walking with God in a godless culture often means sacrificing your dignity. It actually reminds me of King David, and specifically in 2 Samuel chapter 6. See, David is spearheading the effort to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And in the process, he totally abandons himself in worship. He lets go of his royal splendor and he dances before the presence of the Lord basically in his underwear. Now, his wife sees this and like most wives who see their husbands dance around in their underwear, she does not get excited. As a matter of fact, she gets very angry because she doesn't get it. But David's response, and I, and I really love it, is I'll become even more undignified than this. I'll be humiliated in my own eyes if that's what it takes to show people that God is worthy to be praised and worth more than our earthly treasures. I will be more than glad to do it. Now, it took a whole lot of courage for David to lay down his own pride and dignity to honor the Lord, just like it took a whole lot of courage for Noah to walk with the Lord and to walk out his calling to build the ark. Now, we are faced with similar choices today. Now, all too often, people want to point fingers at things happening in the world around them and either use those circumstances as evidence that God can't possibly exist or to wrongly characterize God as something or someone that he is not. It takes a lot of courage to stand up to that and say, I serve a living God. He is, I am, that I am, and he is exactly who he says he is. But see, Noah's courage wasn't just in standing up to the culture. It was also in believing God to do this miracle in the first place. See, this worldwide catastrophe was unlike anything that had ever been seen before and has never been seen again. It was unprecedented. And when it started to rain, the headlines probably would have looked a lot like our newspapers and online articles do today. Thousands perish as one wackadoo builds a boat for eight people. Flooding continues, stay home or drown. Survivor numbers now in single digits. Who is reading this? Now the truth was, there was nowhere to hide from this judgment of God. There was no stopping this devastation. It takes incredible courage to trust and believe that you will be one of the only people to walk away from that. 
It takes an outstanding faith to listen to the voice of God when it sounds contradictory to everything else that you see and hear around you. We are surrounded by people who are faced with this reality every day. Everybody stay home so you don't get sick. Except for you, essential worker. You get out there and you keep us going. You get out there and you do your job. You get out there and believe that you'll be okay despite not having the best personal protection equipment. Look, it takes outstanding faith to do that and do that with any kind of peace and confidence. And my heart especially goes out to those who are essential workers but don't have the hope and peace that comes from knowing Christ and yet are still called to do these jobs, to continue to do their work. Without that shield of faith, I don't know what you trust in. And if you happen to be listening today and you're one of those people, hear this cry in all of your fear, in all of your uncertainty, in all of the shaking that is going on in your life as you get up every day to do your job. You are very much appreciated, but you still very much need Jesus. Today is a great day to learn who he is and to start to get to know him. Now there's one element of a hero that we haven't addressed yet. And I want to make sure that we get there before we start to bring things to a close today. And that element is nobility, being noble. A noble person can be a difficult thing to define or describe. Some of the characteristics that you'll find in a noble person, though, include courage, honesty, integrity, respect. Now, we've already talked about how Noah was righteous, blameless among the people of his time. He did what was right. He walked with God. We could reasonably say that you'd find most of these noble qualities in Noah. But I want to challenge you that there's a far more important list of qualities or characteristics that we need to concern ourselves with today. And that list looks like this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Now, if you didn't catch on, that's not just an arbitrary list of qualities. That's a list that comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. It's Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. And this is what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, that Last part of verse 25 catches my attention so strongly when we look at Noah walking with God and yet here at the end of 25, separated by thousands of years, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us walk with or walk in the Spirit. Just like Noah walked with God in his time, we need to be walking with God in our time. An everyday hero will not just be an upstanding individual. They won't just be someone who is selfless in their work or their giving. A real, bona fide, 
everyday hero is someone who possesses all of those qualities because they are filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. So if you want to walk out of this or any other crisis that you may face feeling like a hero, it is absolutely necessary that you be led by the Spirit of God. And the lesson we can take from Noah here is not only did he listen to the voice of God, the end of this passage in Genesis tells us that he did everything that God commanded him. He may not have understood. He may not have looked forward to the work and the effort that some of it was going to take, but he listened, he trusted, and he obeyed. Genesis 7.16 tells us that when the time came for Noah and his family to enter the ark and the rain began to fall, the Lord shut him in. Hear that again. He didn't close that door himself. The Lord shut him in. God will shield you and shelter you in all kinds of ways but he gets to decide what they are. The wisest and most heroic thing any of us can do is listen to the voice of God, the leading of his spirit, and do what he says. Because a real, everyday hero does not rely on himself. He trusts in the Lord and follows his lead. And so today when we look around us and we look at all the people who can be classified as heroes, be careful about who you put your trust in. Be careful about who you put your faith in. Because the the brightest and most brilliant minds among us may be hard at work in developing treatments and cures for coronavirus and all kinds of different diseases and afflictions. Oh yes, our military and our first responders and law enforcement well they may be out there in the middle of crazy circumstances risking their own well-being to keep us safe. Even the guys that bag your groceries and bring them to your cars put themselves at risk. But at the end of the day, you have to ask the question, in whom do they trust? Are they out there doing what they're doing with no confidence in anything but themselves? Or are they relying on the one who can truly shield, protect, guard, and guide? See, the people that we trust generally become the people that we follow and the people that we model ourselves after. So I want to encourage you as we explore what it is to be an everyday hero to put your trust in, to follow as closely as possible, and to model your own life and behaviors after God himself. Look to Jesus. If you want to be a hero, he's the first one that we should be paying attention to. Would you pray with me this morning, church? Father, we thank you that you do guide us, you guard us, you lead us, you protect us, you give us wisdom. God, we ask that as we seek to rise above our circumstances and situations, as we seek to continue to be representatives of your kingdom, ambassadors of heaven here on earth, Father, that you would give us a faith to trust and believe, courage to follow you. And that God, through your spirit at work within us, we would do outstanding things. 
not to make ourselves look good, but to show your power is at work, that you are present, that you are alive, that you are real, and that you are moving. God, we do pray for the everyday heroes who are all around us. God, those who are out there working and striving to keep our society moving, to keep us healthy and to find a cure, to find a solution. God, we thank you that while this disease might physically ravage our world and our bodies, God, you addressed the deeper disease that ravages our souls. God, we thank you that you and you alone are and provided the cure for the disease of sin. So God, today, for those who are looking for hope, for those who are looking for peace, Father, we pray for a move of your spirit on their hearts and in their minds right now, that they would hear your voice clearly and know that there is no life, there is no hope, there is no peace, there is no truth. God, there's, there's nothing without you. Father, today I pray that you would move upon them to come to you and confess their need for you, to confess their need for your forgiveness, to confess their need for your hope. God, we all need your hope. We all need to be inspired. And so we look to you today and every day. Confirm in our hearts and minds that we are people called by your name. And that name is the name above every other name. To whom one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. We confess it and we believe it today, Jesus, that you are Lord of all. We love you and we thank you. We praise you for always being more than enough. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Church, I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. I want to encourage you to jump over to our kids' Facebook page, Extreme Kids, here in about 10 minutes for our kids' church at home experience today. And I also want to remind you that we're working on a little something special to be a part of this Everyday Hero series, but I need your help. I need you to send me pictures of those people who are out there working in essential industries, working in essential jobs, who are putting themselves at risk every day for the rest of us. That can be all kinds of things. Doctors, nurses, grocery store workers, postal carriers, you name it. Anybody who's out there doing that kind of thing to keep life moving for us, please send me their picture if you know them and I need their name and what they do, their title, their job, along with that picture. Send that to me. I need that sometime in the coming week so we can get things put together. I'm real excited to share it with you. Church, I love you. I cannot wait to see you in person again soon. And in the meantime, be sure to like and follow our Facebook page and all our other social media so you get the notifications when we go live and when we post new content because we are Lifesong, still connected, still living life together, even though we are scattered. I love you guys and we'll see you again very soon. God bless.